Okay, so now let's implement insertion sort. It's a relatively simple algorithm, at least conceptually, but I will admit that coding it up is a bit more tricky than you would expect. And this variation of insertion sort is actually going to be run on a list of pairs. They're represented here in the example with parentheses around them, but a pair is going to be a class that has a key value, which is going to be an integer and a value, which is going to be a string. And in this this case we not only want to sort the array but here you can see we're returning a list of lists and those inner lists are a list of pairs why do we have three lists in the output well it's because as we do insertion sort the way insertion sort works is first we're going to sort this portion of the array by this portion I mean just the first element next we sort the first two elements this portion should be sorted. And lastly, we sort the first three elements and that's pretty much the entire list. So you can see that the last array in the output is completely sorted. The second array in the output is technically also sorted, but it's not guaranteed to always be the case. And you can see in the first case, the array is definitely not sorted. Technically, this portion is sorted because it's just a single pair. And the main reason we are returning these intermediate states of insertion sort is to basically test the correctness of your algorithm. You could technically just call like the built-in dot sort method or however you call it in your language of choice. Or you could, you know, technically implement merge sort here or quick sort here, but that is not insertion sort. And that's why I've created the problem in this way. And to be honest, this actually doesn't make the problem much harder. Like if you were to just implement the regular insertion sort, then you would only need to add a single line of code, I believe, to actually add the intermediate states to the output. So it's not like a huge deal. There's a couple of clarifying points though in this problem. One is that we want to maintain the relative order of two key values. So if you take a look at the second example here, you can see we have two pairs, one with a key value of three cat and another with a key value of three, that's bird. Since bird comes after cat in the input, it should also come after cat in the output. And that is the case. And that's because insertion sort typically is a stable algorithm. We don't really have to do anything special to make sure that we maintain the relative order of elements if there's a tie. That's pretty much it for the description. Now, if you're familiar with insertion sort, this isn't super difficult, but if you're not, it is a bit more tricky than you would expect. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is just get the length of the array just to make things simple for us. And I'm going to declare an array called result. This is going to be what stores the intermediate states as we are running insertion sort, and that's what we're going to return. So this is gonna be a list of lists. And now we're going to loop over the entire array. Remember, first we wanna sort like the first element, then the first two, then the first three. So we're gonna use a pointer to tell us what portion of the array we have sorted so far. I is gonna tell us what position we're currently at, and now we're gonna start sorting. Now, as we iterate through an array, let's say I have four, three, and six. Let's say we start at four. It's already sorted. There's nothing really to do here. Then we get to the second element three. What do we do? Well, we want this portion of the array to be sorted. So we take three and compare it with four. Is three less than four? Yes, it is. So what should we do with these two elements? Probably swap them, right? And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So our I pointer is gonna be here, let's say. We're gonna have a second pointer that's gonna initially be at the left of the I pointer. So I'm gonna set J equal to I minus one. And now I'm gonna say while the key value at index J, so we're gonna get the pair at index J first and then compare by key, cause that's how we're sorting. We're sorting these by key. And that's again to test the correctness of your code. So if the value at the J pointer is greater than the value at J plus one. And the reason I'm not using I here is you're gonna see in just a second, but yeah, J plus one, which initially is going to be the same as I. So while this is the case, let's swap them. In Python, thankfully, it's pretty easy to perform a swap. We don't need like a temporary variable, though depending on the language you're using, you might need a temporary variable. It's not a big deal. But here, we're just going to swap them like this. At J, we're going to place J plus one, and at J plus one, we're gonna place 
J. After we do that, like let's say after we perform this swap, or actually let's think about it, uh, like let's say we did the swap and let me actually replace this value with a two to illustrate my point a little bit better. So now let's say our I pointer is here. Now we are gonna take two and compare it with four. Is two less than four? Think about what we're doing here. We already know this portion of the array is sorted and we just need to find which position is the two gonna go in so that this entire array is sorted. So we'd look at two, compare it with the four, it's less. So swap two with four here. But now we're not done yet. Now we should probably decrement our pointer because now two is here. So the value we're gonna be comparing this with is gonna be minus one as well. It's gonna be to the left here. So really all we have to do here is take our J pointer and decrement it by one. We don't need to maintain the, our I pointer. We can't use the I pointer here because as we are taking the two value from here and shifting it to the left, now the I pointer is no longer gonna be correct for this value that we're trying to uh, insert somewhere. Now that we decremented J, we're comparing this with this. J is over here, J plus one is here, two is again less than three. So now two is gonna be here. And at this point, we're done. And that's because J is gonna be decremented again and now it's out of bounds. So we need another condition here to make sure that we don't get like an index out of bounds error here. So before we check that comparison, let's make sure J is greater than or equal to zero and this is the case. That's pretty much actually the entire bulk of the code. If we were just doing a normal insertion sort, here we would just return pairs, but we're not doing that. We're adding one extra line of code here. We're gonna say result. Now that we've sorted the like this portion of the array, we're gonna add the intermediate state, the intermediate list of pairs to the result. But we can't just do that because this is an object and we're continuously modifying it. So we're actually gonna take this and clone it in Python. It's pretty easy to do like this, but maybe in your language of choice, you'll need like a method call for that. It's not a big deal, but this is pretty much the entire code. I will say that this does technically impact the time complexity of insertion sort, which in the worst case is going to be big O of N squared, but this definitely will impact the time complexity of it. I think it makes it N cubed, but we're not really concerned with that. We're more concerned about implementing insertion sort and doing it correctly. Usually people aren't doing insertion sort because of its efficiency, though there are some cases where insertion sort will run in O of N time. That's if the array is already sorted. Now let's go ahead and run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see, it does. So I'll go ahead and leave things there.